It's kind of a bigger challenge for me. Poor, I feel the muscle pain. You can't plan anything. You can't do anything twice. Three photographers on an adventurous road trip through northern Norway. Steep mountains. Rugged islands. Deep fjords. Perfect conditions for Team Hawkland. On day three, we had to catch the ferry in time so that we can get to the next destination. If we had missed it, we would have had to make a big detour for around eight hours. It was the last ferry of the season. With the ferry, you only drive about one hour and a half. And then you are already on Andoja. I have absolutely no expectations of the place we are going now. I haven't seen any pictures of it, nor have I tried to look it up. I'll just yeah, be surprised what is waiting for us. Friends, we got one hour on the ferry now. And I would say it's time for the next challenge. The community has given us a task. And this time, we leave the cameras in the backpack because we do everything with a smartphone. You got one hour and I can't wait to see what you will do using this baby. <laughs> okay, let's go. I tried to take a few pictures right at the beginning. Now it's very loud because the engine is on. And when the ship departs, you can see the whole village Grillefjord from the distance. And that's what I tried to capture. So let's go. On a ferry that is constantly moving, it is of course extremely difficult because you can't plan anything, you can't do anything twice. So just take a lot of pictures and then take another 10 minutes and sort them out afterwards. To have is better than to need. That is not just my favorite model in general, but it works very well in this situation. Thanks for the challenge. I do it in the following way. On one hand, I look at the landscape and the fjords that we are crossing. On the other hand, I will also look at details on the ship. Any ropes or other things. I'm sure we find something exciting and capture it with my phone. It's kind of a bigger challenge for me, not because I can't take photos with my smartphone, but because my smartphone is relatively old compared to the other two. I have an iPhone 10, that means the technology is already four years old and it's developing so quickly, which means quality is not as great with my phone. I don't have a big wide angle, not a super zoom, but I have to use the things I have on that older device. Depending on the smartphone you use and the feature it has, you can take different pictures. I went to the captain's house and photographed through the window. The old captain as he stood there with the mountains at the horizon. Some very cool photos, some cool moments and I liked the framing of the situation. What you can do with your smartphone is to reach out for unusual perspectives. Something on the ground or a special angle that is uncommon. For the smartphone challenge, I mainly looked for foregrounds to get more depth into the picture and to create a look that is not usual for a smartphone. But yeah, then I was quickly distracted by the location and the fjord we drove through, so I skipped the foreground and rather took pictures of these epic locations. 
And back there is an interesting mountain in the middle of three other mountains. And at the top is a lot of fog. If you now take photos a little outside the norm, not with the rule of thirds, but rather bring the horizon very far below, then you have a really spectacular cloud formation at the top that looks really dark and threatening. And that is what I like a lot right now. Oh, wait a second. Maybe I can show it to you directly on the phone. That's how it looks like. But uh, yeah, we should rather look at it with our own eyes because the whole thing looks even much better in reality. Now, I think everyone excuses that there is no foreground and no depth in the images after all. Only majestic mountain with a moody atmosphere. And a little extra tip. If you also do a challenge like this, do not spend too much time at the spot. Because the others might come and steal your shot. <laughs> do, do, do. Uh, I know it looks like, but I didn't take the same shot. My tip with the smartphone is that you control the exposure yourself. That means make the exposure brighter or darker as you need it. In my case, I always prefer to make it a little darker. I tap the display, then hold it down. It also locks the focus. Then I pull it a bit darker. It looks more dramatic with the fog and the mountains in the background, more epic. I pay attention to the exposure just as I would do with a real camera. And I sometimes find it helpful when you don't have that many options. Zoom in, zoom out, wide angle and so on. You always have to make decisions. Only one option, just look at the motive, take a photo, bam, done. I took photos with the Huawei Mate 20 and mostly used the automatic mode. No matter which phone you have, activate the 3x3 grid. That's a good tool for better compositions. I used the iPhone 12 Pro Max for the challenge. And I really enjoyed having three lenses so that I can choose between normal, telephoto and a wide-angle lens. That gives me the opportunity to get closer and further away at any time I need to. Time to go inside and that's great with the challenges, that you have really to challenge yourself. Being limited, you develop a completely different view for motives and for your photos. And I think they're cool. How do you like them? Write in the comments. The smartphone challenge was cool, but also short. We were only able to make photos for around maybe 10 minutes because it rained hard again. We are now at the open sea and it's shaking a lot. I have to get inside to my seat. How was the smartphone challenge? Oh, wet, very wet again. But it was good. I found some nice angles out there. <laughs> All right, let's get some waffles. Oh yeah, man. Something warm for me, please. Suddenly, there was so much fog that all you saw was only the sea and the waves, so nothing more. When such a large ship begins to move left and right, and you can't see anything at the horizon because it's just raining, your stomach needs to be strong. <laughs> at this point, I preferred to put the phone away, bought a waffle, sat down and tried not to throw up. Next stop, Westerhorn, a new area to discover. General, we have planned some locations in advance where we will stop, but we let ourselves get inspired as well depending on the weather and what we see, what we like, what attracts us. And sometimes we just see something driving by and then we need to stop. Mm. 
My first thought was that we must be somewhere in the Caribbean, because the beach was so white. Wow, how white the sand is, so great. You could think you are somewhere in the south when you see this side here, but when you then look at the other side and see how we are dressed up, yeah, it's clear we are in the north. What I like to do here is to play with a blurry foreground, which means in this case to choose an aperture of four and get very close. For example, to this grass to achieve a nice broad effect that looks really cool. There were these little flowers blooming on the sand. Very nice foreground together with the epic peaks there in the back. I'm actually a bit lazy about the tripod thing. I'm a huge fan of the final result though. And I love the process of sitting down with filters and so on. But yeah, I'm really lazy and I try to do as much as possible out of hand. So everything that goes up to a fifth of a second or something like that, I'm able to capture most of the time. The stabilizer in most of the cameras nowadays are good enough to easily hold them in the wide angle for at least a tenth of a second. If you're extra lazy and don't want to work with filters as well, go to manual mode, close the aperture, set a tenth of a second and put the ISO down as far as you can. I got an aperture of 60 now and an eighth of a second. Good enough to get some motion in the frame because the waves come in quite fast. And yeah, that's exactly what we wanted. Combined with a good foreground, we're getting some spectacular shots. Nobody likes wet feet, so better be quick and take a step back when the waves hit. Tip, always keep one eye open so you can see the next wave coming. Because the weather was good, we decided to go on a hike off to the beach. The hiking boots are ready. A good hike yesterday, another hike today. Poor, I feel the muscle pain. <laughs> when I look at this path and this mountain, I know that I won't keep the layers on for long. I'll need to change them later. But I'm pretty excited because the view from the top seems to be spectacular. I've already seen some pictures online, but unfortunately, everything turned out different. Poor. What the Every equipment gives up at some point. Day three was definitely tough. We, we were just dead. Who won the second challenge? Could you imagine taking photos only with your mobile? Write it in the comments. And thanks so much for your great support so far. All the shares and comments we've received, thank you so much. And this project was a lot of work. Not only the journey and the filming itself in Norway. As I explained in the first episode, we originally filmed and edited everything in German for my German YouTube photography channel and now dubbed everything into English with a team for four days and then needed to re-edit everything again to make it available to you and the whole world. Many thanks also to our US customers. We've received many pre-orders from you at www.hawkland.us and we'll be shipping your orders to your homes in September. And if you haven't ordered yet, you can still benefit from an early bird discount for three more weeks before we close the offer. And you can also receive nine Team Hawkland Lightroom presets completely for free, we created in Norway as a gift. The link is in the description. And if you haven't seen the latest episodes, you can watch them here and you can see the next episode here when it uploads next Friday at 6 p.m. EDT here on this YouTube channel.